Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Shams Masawi. Shams, how are you doing? Good. Hi. Good. I'm super happy to have you on the show. Uh, I am really excited about what we're going to be covering today. I think it's uh, it's going to be really interesting to see. I, I always love to see kind of automation and how we can move things between the different worlds that we live in as front end developers. But before we dive into what we're going to be doing today, let's talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a bit of a background on yourself? Sure. Um, um, I'm Shams, uh, co-founder and CTO of Rowley. Um, so it's, a, it's not that big of a deal since we're only four people. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like it's an it's a open source startup that we're building a um, like a local platform for developers to get into like backend development easily without all the boring work of having to manage all the DevOps and trying to like wait for everything to deploy and all that. Yeah. So I, I guess this is a, always maybe like a foundational question here, but um, when we start talking about backend, I think sometimes it can get a little muddy, especially for somebody like myself who spends most of their time on the front end. So you, you just said do back end without all the DevOps and, and where do you start to draw the line? Like what's, what's happening in ROE that, I guess what's not happening in ROE? Like what are things that I'm going to have to do in, in back end if I'm not using something like ROE that are, uh, when you said DevOps, what does that mean? So like, I'll, I'll give you a background and the real background on myself. So I've been mostly working in, in small teams. So I have to do like sometimes even like sole developer. Um, mm -hmm. So like, um, like a common problem about like backend is like giving access to production to operational people, so operational team members. So like having that problem of like, um, fetch like, updating the the app data and all of that that's a part of like the back end right um, yeah cloud functions trying to write cloud functions to to trigger events is like uh, part of the the back end that like you want to build the goal is to build your your app so your users can benefit from it and engage with your users but like at one point spent more time working on internal tooling so that I get Mm -hmm. everything working so it's like um that kind of that's the kind of back end that Rowie helps you with so you don't ha you can focus more on building your front end so and gotcha. you want to spend less time as possible on like the the like the grunt work of like oh i want to update my data here or i want to send out an email to my user when this happens or oh, I want to um, calculate this value for my database and store in my database if, when this happens, et cetera. Um, yeah, some sure. things that you can't do on the front end is like oh, using like APIs and stuff that have like secrets. So you need a backend for that. And you don't want to like run a whole like node server and all that just so that you can have a secure environment because you can't just run everything on the client side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So, so what you're talking about here, if I can repeat this back to make sure I understand it, is you're saying that you know a, a lot of what I'm dealing with you know, on the back end is going to be managing the the access of of data, and mm -hmm. that data. If I was going to build it myself, I would I would need to set up a server. I would need to set up the deployment processes. I would need to have all of my migration tools and all the things that are required to keep that data up and running and secure and you know dependable. All those things that you need when you're you're running a, a mission critical application. Um, and so with Rowi, you're taking all of that what you called it boilerplate. I think um, yeah. all those things that kind of have to be done but aren't really unique to your app it's just the stuff that lets you build your app you're taking all that and putting it into the the foundation of ROI so that I as a developer then am only going in and defining the data that I want and like the logic yeah. to get that data not necessarily how to store it how to keep it up how to scale it how to do any of those other more 
like operational yeah. things. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, it's and also like about the the coding part we're going to see is that we're going to we break down the coding to just the small elements of each data point rather than like having to host like hundreds of cloud functions like you start with a project and um, with like in the serverless world, you just start adding like cloud functions that will trigger and then you end up having like a big code base of like hundreds of cloud mm -hmm. functions and it becomes very, very hard to maintain and like um, keep like keep everything running. Um, so with Rory, we broke it down into like having small like pieces of code nuggets in your in your table so that you don't have to uh, like you just uh, there's always like you're only looking at the thing that's important to you at that time. Yeah, code nuggets. I like that. I, uh, I mean, it's also getting close Damn. to dinner time for me. So now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm snacky. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So, so, uh, so you said something interesting in there and I, I have a little bit of, you know, I know where we're trying to go here. So I'm going to ask you a bit of a leading question, but when we're talking about Roe, Roe is not just, I have a, like a piece of data, like somebody's name, and I'm going to put this mm. into this, this, like into a Roe table and it sits there and it's just a name right now i can do that but there's there's more to it than that because you're talking about these these code nuggets these kind of like in place serverless functions yeah what what does roe enable on top of just straight up data storage so um so that's like, like actually like roe doesn't we don't host any of your data so we because there's already like a lot of cloud providers like Amazon, Google Cloud, and um, okay. others. We don't like, and we're just a small team of four. We don't want to like have to build infrastructure and maintain it. So what Rowi is 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 a layer, like an interface layer, on top of um, your existing data. Currently, we support oh, okay. mainly support Fire, Firebase, Firestore, and GCP platform because they have a very like very diverse, a lot of different tools that we could use in, in our apps. So it's a, it makes it, it brings that power of having like Google Cloud Platform Scale and Google features like AI and all those features very easily accessible to your app um, in those like, in those cloud functions that we manage for you. So we manage the your infrastructure, the, like your Google Cloud infrastructure for you, um, and you it. can you can go in and like look at your own Google Cloud, and um, we don't like we don't have we don't look into like we don't have to have access to your data or anything. It's just um, the interface, and everything is mainly between oh, you and okay. Google. And okay, so so I bring a, a cloud database like Firebase. And yeah. I put Rowie on top of that and it's going to pull yeah. in my data. And then yeah. I, it's not just one-to-one -one though, right? Like it's not just here's my Firebase data displayed in Rowie. It lets me do more than that. So what are some of the yeah. things that we can do with Rowie once we have data from Firebase or Firestore into our, uh, our Rowie instance? Yeah. So once we have the data, then we start like we can set up um, cloud functions um, inside of Rowie, so it will manage that for you and deploy it. So you just, instead of having to deal with like, or trying to say, or oh, whenever this document is being updated or this document is being deleted, it's just like, oh, whenever this um, field changes, I want to calculate this new field um, rather. So it's, it's a lot, that's what I mean by the nuggets part. So it's, yeah. So when so I it's... when I write like so you what you're saying is when I go into Rowie, um, I can define something like all right I'm going to give you somebody's uh, Twitter handle right now when yeah. I put this Twitter handle into Firebase Rowie's going to see that that field changed and it can fire something off so I could have one field that has a code nugget that says whenever the username field changes go and get their their Twitter avatar and put that here. Exactly. And I could have another one that says, like, go get the, like, do a search on Twitter and find the, the top 10 people in the last few days that they've interacted with to make friend recommendations or something like that. 
Yeah, yeah. And like if, all if you have, yeah, and if you have like the right APIs, then you can also like, or you can DM that person. Uh, oh, cool. With like, if you're on like, either on like a press of a button or like a based on an event as well. Yeah, so, so basically you're talking about like some pretty complex data in what data enrichment is that maybe the right the right word here yeah 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 so data enrichment or like derived data or or even just straight up automation based yeah. on the data coming in so for me this is always kind of the dream is i i want to track as little data as possible in my own databases and and what i you know i don't want a bunch of user data. I don't want to have to keep trying. You know, I it, it always makes me nervous when I'm holding on to somebody's like email address or their home address or something like that. I'm like, I don't want any of that, right? Um, but it is kind of interesting to think about the idea that, like, as I'm building out my app, there are ways that I could let somebody put in some of their own information, and then I can enrich that data with stuff that's available via an API that they would authorize or via you know open information. Like you can go get somebody's GitHub avatar just by knowing their GitHub username or, or something like that. Like, so now we can start building these, these much more rich experiences without having to ask for a lot of buy-in from the users to like authorize GitHub, authorize Twitter, authorize your Google account. Let me have access to all of your accounts so that I can do this stuff. We can start to take advantage of, of the data that's already there and the, the things that we have access to already to build out more valuable experiences. Um, yeah. And it's not just user stuff too, right? Like I can, I could do this with really anything that I can get access to on the internet. I can, yeah, I can start to modify. Yeah, anything. Basically, like mainly anything that you want to do on the, like you don't want to do on your client side, and you want to like have your app have that feature, and mm -hmm. then you should like be doing it on your backend. But you don't want to set up a whole backend just for that. You want to just do it quickly and get back to the thing that you really want to do, which is build your product, which mostly is like the, like for the users is the main thing is the front end that like, that's the thing they, they interact with. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and that's actually a really good point because, you know, one of the things that I talk about a lot is, is like finding tools that let you just focus on building the valuable thing. Um, and so this is very in line with my my own heart, what I care about. And so as I'm building out a front end and I want to get a little bit of thing, like, you know, typically what I'm what I'm looking at is, oh, I'm going to go reach for a, a Netlify function because um, that's the world I know. And I, I know what you mean, though, as you you start to build out really complex stuff where it's not just like a couple transformations. Now it's like, OK, well, I need to do a transformation. I need this transformation to depend on that transformation. And like now I'm doing like a lot of logic. I don't really want to do that in, in a series of, of Netlify fun or serverless functions. Like I, or, and I also don't want to set up a, and like a node server to have that logic because I'm, it always makes me sad when I have to set up a node server. Um, but I am able to use something like Rowy to have like my table and my fields and each of those fields has the logic defined right it's right inside Rowy. like i'm i'm looking at my yeah, logic yeah. in place yeah that's yeah. really cool because that, that's also something interesting where as i'm thinking about my data we're co-locating data alongside logic which yeah. i i imagine somebody's going to be like but wait you need separation of concerns but i kind of like it in this case because it's it's saying you know, show me what I'm doing to the data, where the data is. Don't make me open three different editors to figure out what's going it's, on with my. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you still have separations of concerns, but it's on the actual piece of thing rather than like you separate your your code from your data. You just separate your code and data into separate blocks so that you mm -hmm. just, when you're thinking about it, we'll get we'll get to see a lot of the benefits of that as well. It's when you're when you're thinking about one thing at a time, you're not switching context and you're not um, having to like switch a lot of tabs and try to do something here and look over here. And then it's just, yeah. it's, it is a lot better. So I know that, uh, you know, you mentioned that you're a, you're a small team. There's just four of you right now. Um, as you are, are starting to build this out and, and see it grow, what are some of the use cases where you've really seen Rowie shine? 
Um, so it's, I think a lot of it is to do with how fast you can get things up and running in production. Um, so it's just, there's a lot of like, oh, we needed to, like a, a team needed a product on, like out by Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. And they were able to do it in a month um, rather than having to like, they would have missed that deadline if they had to do it in like their traditional development style of like having to do everything themselves and like um, just like writing everything in VS Code and all that. It just, it makes things a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you, you'll get to see it. Just um, everything is a lot more connected. It's like how the like the Mac M1 is so much faster than the Intel structures because you have everything on the same chip. It's like a uh, similar concept, but like yeah, that's a good yeah, analogy. So like, yeah, so yeah, that's why um, like your development experience is going to be a lot faster because everything is on the in the same place. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, I think this this is probably a good point then to to say let's go dive into this, right? So let's let's actually take a look at it. I'll switch us over to the other view here. Here we are. Okay, so first and foremost, before we get started with the code, let me just do a quick shout out. We are live with Shams, and that is being live captioned on learnwithjason.dev by Jordan at White Coat Captioning. Thank you very much for being here today, Jordan. And that's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible and just make more things possible on Learn with Jason. Um, we are looking at Rowie.io today. I know John Gemstone already dropped a link. Thank you for that. But I'll drop it again just for uh, for posterity, right? And we we're talking to Shams, so make sure you go give Shams a follow on on Twitter. Uh, I don't with that much, means... so you, can, you can follow Rowie instead if you want. Yeah. Follow follow Rowie instead. All right, follow yeah. Rowie instead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, that's about all I know about getting started. So I'm, I'm looking at the Rowie site and, um, you sent me access to a, a Firebase setup before I'm, yeah. so I, this is all I know. So how, what's the first thing that I want to do if I've got a, a well, actually yeah. maybe let's talk a little bit about what I'm looking at here. This is uh, a special kind of Firebase plan or any, anything special about it? No, so this is the basically we um, we use Cloud Run in the background. So this is like a upgraded place plan. So this is this is a, just a gen like a blank canvas Firebase okay. project. Um, I just set it up so that we have like the billing enabled um, because oh, we gotcha. need it in one of the features. But the in general the the free tier is very high. Um, so it's it's um, it's very reasonable, and then if you sign up, you get three hundred dollars free credit. So, okay, um, and you mostly need it. Um, you don't need it if you're just doing it as a hobby. Um, so, so most of what we're doing today is going to be available on the free tier, and we'll just call yeah. out the the part that's on a paid plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, cool. Well, then I I'm ready to roll here. So if I yeah. do, so, I go over so to guess, Rowan. Yeah. So we can. Yeah, we can up to if you want. We can get started with the get started, or we can look at the live demo um, if you want to see some examples. Let's let's um, just dive right in, and then we can yeah, poke at the good. live demo yeah. at the end okay. to, to yeah. show people more yeah. how it's working. Sure. sure. So yeah. So first, we like we ask you to log in. Um, okay. And then basically that helps us handhold you to I guess the setup kind of process. Show some stuff. Yeah. Um, to, so if I leave this unchecked, is that going to be okay? Um, no, so that, yeah, so basically that will look at the, try to make sure that you have everything set up. So we need that. Okay. You can revoke okay. it afterwards. So, got it. Because we don't need it to keep it going. We just need it to make sure that everything is good. Um, got it. So here, like, yeah, so we'll get you different projects that you need and then that you have already on your Firebase, or you can create a new one if you don't have one from the link. Yes, um, and I just I added this LWJ Rowy, so I'm going to continue. Yeah, and then so now we'll just check. So I've already created the project. So initialize Rowy, and then it'll ask you. So here you have it uses Firestore 
um, and Firestore uses Firestore rules to protect your data. And uh -huh. this is like on the on the left side, you have your existing rules. And on the right side, it's like what well, we're changing to it. Um, so you can modify and you can make it like resolve if you have any issues with the, the ones we're adding. And then you can just set the rules um, on the bottom left. So these are, these are Firestore rules. Um, and they basically allow you to have client access to your data without having to need a backend. Um, and, and so we, we won't dive into this today, but what we do have is uh, we've got a good episode with David East yeah. where we talk about Firebase. So if you want to go dig into more of that, go and do that. Oh, and what's up, Don? I just saw uh, Don Brown just raided with, uh, with some friends. So welcome, everybody. We're learning about Rowy today. So that's going to be, that's what we're doing now. We just got a, a Firebase instance and we are giving Rowy permissions. So I'm going to set these rules. Yeah. Okay. And then, so this is the Firestore rules and we do the same thing with storage. So storage is another service and that's for like images and files that are not data We same thing. And then here we're just setting like, oh, if you have rows, then you can add it. And that's it. Um, Great. That's your, um, project set up and then now you're like you have your own rowy lwj rowy app oh cool um, okay i understand what's happening yeah. yeah so now that's created um we have like you can basically have access to all the cms features like editing data and creating tables so let's create a table um okay. and then let's like call it posts um, so we have, yeah, so we have primary collection and group collection, um, group collection, which is like in the, like the Firestore, NoSQL, um, you have like sub collections and then collection groups allow you to group all the, all the sub collections into one. So let's say you have like users and then inside users, you have orders, but you want to have a table for all the orders, um, oh, you would have okay. a group, um, group table group collection for that. Gotcha. And then, okay. Yeah. And then so, we'll set yeah, we'll set the display as well. I think you need to set the oh, got it. This mainly so you just just you can name yeah. You can name it and then most everything else is you don't need a section. Everything else is optional. We have access control. So here you can set who can access it and then this would suggest what Firestore, so by default, we only have admin, but you can, it's flexible to have any role that you want, um, depending on your, like how sophisticated, how many people you have in the team and what the access of each one. And you have access to like change the rules for each um, individual type of user. For now, the default is that it allows the admin globally. So yeah, if that's it, you can just create it. And then these are auditing, so you can just, um, it will track the changes that you make to your um, data. So that's like, oh, who made this change? And like, um, when okay. did that happen? All of that, yeah. And then do so we want any of, of these auto columns? Um, you can initialize created by. Um, okay. And yeah, that, that's, um, I think that's. Cool. Yeah, that's let's do it. So create. Yeah. And then so that's so that's your empty table. And then um, let's add. Um, we can add columns here. So do we want to talk about the what we're doing today in terms of the project? Yeah. Okay. So um, so an idea that you pitched that I thought was great is that using Rowy we can dig into a Figma template and combine that Figma template with data from Rowy to automatically generate uh, SEO images, which I thought was brilliant um, because I, you know, I've done, this is making images dynamically is something that I, I've tried a handful of different ways. I really like, you know, like Cloudinary is a great tool for this. And I've seen uh, solutions where you use like a, uh, something like Puppeteer to load a page and then screenshot it and save the screenshot. So this is a whole new approach that I haven't seen. I've never seen like the data layer being the, the generator for these images. And so I'm really excited to see how this works. Um, but so what I think yeah. that's going to mean for us 
is the, in this post table, I'm going to want a, a title field and a, and like an image field, and then some kind of magic in Rowy that's going to make that image field automatically create itself. Yeah. So I'll. So we have basically what I'm. I want to show like how to use like fetch and um, mm -hmm. interact with like other APIs. So what I want to do is like we'll have a a word column, and then from the word we'll get the definition from a dictionary API, and then we'll get an image from Unsplash. Um, API, and then oh. we'll, we'll generate that in a separate column. So we'll just do a short text for now. And okay, then we'll we got a short first. text. First one's going to be title. We'll call, we can call it um, noun or word. So since it's going to be the, oh. the definition and the... Um, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. Um, and then, so... Basically, now what we want to do is um, create an API call to get the definition, right? Um, so okay. for that, we use like a derivative column. So if you add a column, um, and then if you search for in the in the Cloud Functions section, so we have like all these different Cloud function sections. So we have a derivative. So that basically is a derived value. And then you okay. can call it like dictionary API. Um, so we'll break it down into two steps first, and then we can uh, we can combine it, but this is, I think the, this will be clearer. If, uh, we yeah, have a call is... to, if we have a dictionary API call, and then we'll okay. have a call, another column for the definition because the response from the dictionary API will be like a lot more data than what we want to use. So we'll just okay. have that, um, yeah. And then now you get um, prompted to set up the the thing that we talked about that requires the the billing. So if you were just to manage your like your data and all that, it's all free. Um, and then, but if you need that um, cloud run because it's like part of the enterprise API, so that you need billing enabled. Um, gotcha. But yeah, but the, this it's a, it's a lot of it's a huge free tier. Um, so it's it shouldn't. So now we just we'll go through the. Um, you can select a region. Um, I think the IO one is the greenest, so I prefer that one. This one? Uh, yeah, it's the, lower, uh, the most carbon-free energy. So Okay. I'm always a fan of yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so basically, we can leave that. Um, that will set up some, like, in the background, that will do, like, um, the cloud setup environment, so you can minimize that. And then okay. we can go to Figma. Um, go to now. Figma. All right. And then we'll just start a new design. OK. And then let's do, like, we'll add a frame. We'll make a social media. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, do you know the dimensions off the top of your head, or should I have Google those? Um, I was I was thinking we'll use the one of the template frames. The Instagram post was like. Um, oh, I didn't realize that was an option. Yeah. So then you just choose. Uh, oh, social, social media. media. Then. Yeah. Instagram uh, post. Okay. So yeah. let me delete this one. So, and then we'll just have like the, the text on top with like the noun. We'll make that big. Okay, so let's use uh, Roboto's fine, and then we'll make it like 100. Yeah. And then okay. we'll, let's do like a definition. We can make that smaller, and then we'll need to we'll need some space for the image as well. So for the image, we'll just do a rectangle for now. Okay. Um, let's go with regular, and then we'll say this is the definition. Um, and right, we're going to put an image in. So let's, oops, put this down here and this down here and a rectangle up here. Yep. Cool. And then, yeah, so that's, that's all we're going to do for 
in Figma. Our, um, and then we can export the, the post to SVG. So what we want to do is we want to generate an SVG um, that we can modify in code. Um, so you, oh, you mentioned I? public. That's fine. Um, yeah, so um, you just need to change it to SVG. And then there's like the 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 menu next to the SVG, the, the three dots. I think you need to cancel the outline text because by default, it makes it into outline. We want to make it into text. So that's um, that's all. Um, and then we can export that. OK. I didn't realize then, that those buttons existed. This yeah. this might change my whole experience with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Figma and exporting. Yeah. OK. Uh, but so now we have an SVG here. You can yeah. see it down here. Can we, yeah. Can we open it in Code, code Sandbox? Um, or, yeah. Uh, I'm going to open it in Code Pen because that's the one that I know really well. So let me okay. open it up here. And then uh, we've got. I think if you just paste it. Um... Will it work if I just you... drop it in? Oh, that's beautiful. OK. okay. So here's our. Yeah. Got it? OK. Um, so one thing that we need to change is the. Um, the image, right? So we need mm -hmm. to change the image into, um, instead of a rectangle, we want to make it into an image. Um, so that's um, in the, in the yeah, so we'll call that an image. And then we'll do a, you are a, a, like a, I think you need a href. Oh, wait, did I screw this up? I what? did, I did the wrong oh. one. Here's the one that I want. Uh, so this is an image and you said href? Yeah. And then do you have an example URL that we can do this with? And definitely head over to Unsplash and grab one. Yeah. Let's get, here we go. Copy image link. And we're probably, yeah. and that mostly works. We'll probably have to, yeah. let's see, if I, if I set this width to match, and then we can do that in, in code as well. Um, I think it'll crop for us. Nice. I didn't know. Um, Apparently not, yeah. but OK. <laughs> OK. Yeah, that's. Um, and then we'll, one thing that we need to do is if we go to the, the definition section um, of, the, of the SVG, basically, this would be, um, I think just if you make the, it's a little bit down. Um, so it's here's the, the here's the definition. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So the the text box that one is the problem with that is that it will only do it doesn't do multi line so it wouldn't wrap. Mm. So we need to introduce a like a foreign object. So foreign objects in SVG allows you to um, use divs use HTML inside. Like so that. we'll get rid of yeah, um, but we'll need to get rid of the the whole text. It replace the whole text block instead of okay. um, so we had the do I want to keep this, yeah. these so attributes? We wanna, um, not really. We um, okay. we just need the position. The position. Um, okay. So the position was X and Y. Yeah. So I'll put that yeah. here. And then let's get rid of these. Yeah, and the the T is the that's I broke working. it. I broke it. I think there's a. Can we put the definition in a div? Um, I'm not sure if that one. Okay, so I have done something, and I don't know what that something is. So I've got my foreign object, and my foreign object has no. Does it need that? It needs a width and height. Yeah. Ah, OK, so let's give it a width of, hmm. The x is 74, so what's 1080 minus 74 uh, minus 74, right? 
932. So width of 932. And then mm -hmm. a height. Hi. We'll give it a height of like 100 to start. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. All right. We got closer. And then the, we need to style the diff. Um, I think. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, that works. That was Perfect. Work. Okay. All right. Yeah. So so now that that's ready, um, we can check back in if we have um, if we have the cloud run cloud, the yep yeah, that's done. We can close that. Um, it'll redirect you so you can close that off, um, and then we'll go back okay. to uh, we'll go back to Rowie. Got it. Um, so here you have. The first thing is like you have a default value option. So sometimes when you're creating a new row, you don't want to start with like an empty field and you want to like initialize it with like either something by default, either like is it being like false or true or like a special string, or you can even do a dynamic value where you like um, generating it from something else. But for now, we'll leave that as undefined because okay. we're only concerned with like getting the setting up, setting up the listener to the noun so we'll get um and then we'll select noun so whenever a noun changes it will do that and then we'll do a json um type so if you search for um yeah there it is um okay. yeah and then so here we have in the derivative script we have the like uh, the blocks of this one i think it will clear out eventually but um yeah you can you can make that larger and then we can, so this is the, the code. So this is an example. Basically, it's just like, oh, you can add two rows and we'll return it. And then the return value will be stored in the field. Um, so if we'll use the, the free dictionary API. It's called, um, what is it called? It's called dictionaryapi.dev. There we um, go. Okay. Yeah. So that one you just it's very simple. We just need to we just need to do a fetch and then replace the word with something else. Um, Got it. So, okay. Is so uh, now is we're... fetch built in here? Like can I just Yep. Okay. So we'll get the uh, so... response. Not have to spell that, I'm gonna call it res. Um, and then we will do await fetch and we're gonna make this a template string so that we can get our word here. Yeah. Um, and that um, was just a get, it. I think. Um, so you then, don't, uh, yeah, you don't need to, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so you'll get the, get the result out, the JSON, yeah. If I can spell it, here we go, JSON. This is really tiny, let me make it bigger. Um, so there's our JSON, that's gonna be a wait JSON, and then we have it, so, so I can turn, it. turn that. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, so for the word, um, we have we have in the function um, at the top on the first line we have all these different things. So we have row which gives you access to um, all the fields, and we have ref which gives you the reference to the row for like um, other like trying to get the parent and all that. And then you okay. have other like database and storage and auth which gives you global access to. Um, and we got autocomplete. So I can just hit dot and yeah. off I go. So, yeah. so now, if I'm understanding correctly, once I save this, yeah. we're going to get. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so if you update now um, and it will save changes, you can deploy. Um, okay. Yeah. And then this will, this will build, um, this will build a, Cloud function in the background, but we don't need to wait for that. Um, I added a special feature just for this show. Is it will have like um, a new feature. It will just you can evaluate straight away um, oh, for nice. things that don't use that don't use external dependencies. We can do evaluate straight away. So you can add a new row, um, okay. and then and then see like the you already said who made it, and then you can yeah exactly. It's, I knew that you tried that. <laughs> um, so yeah so now that you, you can right click on the 
the, the dictionary API cell, and then you can evaluate. And then you get a response. So if you open it in the side panel, um, you get all that response in um, from, the, from the API. So you have like the meanings, and if you scroll down, you have like the definitions. So that's um, great. Yeah, so that's like that's done. Um, another thing we could do is like let's add another derivative column okay. um, to uh, get so the close this up. Like, yeah. So, we're so gonna call now it. we'll do definition. Okay, so we're gonna get a definition, and, that's and then we'll do be another derivative. Yeah. A derivative. Yeah. That, that search to get the field name is nice. Yeah. All right. So this one um, is going to be. Dictionary API. Exactly. And the output um, field type is going to be text. Long text. So you can do long text. Long text. Just, yeah, okay. It's to train. Um, and then you can see here, it's like um, you get the squiggly line. It's like, oh, there's something wrong here. It's because it's expecting a string back and you haven't written that string. So you get, the, you get the benefits of TypeScript by writing it with JavaScript. So you don't like, you can still write JavaScript, but you get all these. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we'll just um, so we can get yeah. the the value out by doing a row Push, dictionary uh, API because yeah. that came back as mm -hmm. a as a um, an array, and then inside yeah. of one of these, I can get the definition. And I, I guess I yeah uh, yeah yeah type definition. That's fine. I will auto it all. Um, so if you type value in, uh, does that complete for you? Uh, mm -hmm. let's see, how did that work? Let me, so we so got our do... first thing and we get meanings. Yeah. Should I, like, should I try a different if way? You to just, get the... If you just try row, let me, let's try just directly from the row and then type definition and then zero and then all that. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can just do that. Let's do that. Didn't complete for some reason. And then we'll do get the first, the first element. Um, and then we'll get definitions. I think it's definitions. Um, so after meanings, it's definitions. Um, uh, and then like the first definition we want. Oh, okay. So meaning zero, okay. definitions yeah. zero, definition. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll return that. Not safe. Let's yeah. close that. And then we can, yeah, update that. Update. And then we have like, um, you can later. Oh, that's, that's okay. Uh, I guess I probably should have waited. Yeah. Um, but look, I just evaluated and it did the thing. And so now yeah, and we have, um, oh, wait, I'm over in the wrong thing. I want to go into. Um, yeah, so if you just. Um, if you just let's say if you have, you want to open the definition, you just open and scroll down, um, like open the the side panel, and then underneath you get ah, all, got your, it. all your columns. So all your columns are here in like a e easier to read format. Um, nice and manage. Yeah, so you have some data that you can do in the table, but sometimes like a long text, it's hard to add in this like in the table. So you have this kind of um, UI so you can manage it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then let's close the, we can have a look at that later. Um, if you just close the, um, that build log. Um, okay. So we got a noun. Yeah. We got a definition. You can try adding a new row. And then, okay. oh, sorry. Um, yeah. We'll add another column now. And then we'll do the Unsplash API. Okay, so unsplash API, mm -hmm. and this yeah. is also going to be derivative. Yeah. Okay. And then um, we'll listen to the noun again. Okay. And, and this then one's we'll going to be. Do, uh, we can do a JSON. Up to you if you want to. If we want to do, we can either do the JSON or the image straight away. Um, Let's uh, let's um, let's go straight to the image. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the same thing with the with the 
with the image a with the unsplash API. Um, but first, the unsplash API has a secret. Um, mm -hmm. I've already yeah. So if you if you go back to the yeah, let me drop a quick link. Realize I also didn't link to this dictionary API, so let me drop that in here for folks. Um, back here I go. Um, if you minimize that um, the code part block, um, you see you have the the that key. Um, so that links you to the secret manager on GCP, so that we're not like storing your secrets and managing it. So it's all managed within your own GCP platform. Um, nice. So I've already added some um, keys, so we don't have to add them. But basically, it's very easy to add. You just create create key button and then add the, the value and the key that you want. Um, yeah. So like if I if I click this, it yeah, would give me. I just, just okay. Need to, boom, boom, boom. The name and the value. That's it. That creates it for you. Okay. Um, so we've got unsplash here. So to access that, I then yeah. need to. Is it in? Auth or something. So it's else. not. It's a. It's in. So if you let's let's get it out. So we'll do const um, ap unsplash secret, and then it's in Rowy. So Rowy is like a utility package to help you do those inter that, that interface. So we'll do secrets and then get, and then you can type the secret name. So it'll, like it will error unsplash. out unless you have the. Um, the right key, so that kind of thing, um, you like you oh, won't nice. get if you're not like if you're doing in VS Code where you just it doesn't know um, what your cloud infrastructure is like, and so here you just make, you don't have to double check like oh am I using the right key etc. And then it's an asynchronous, so we'll have to await. And then yeah, so. Um, and then we'll do the we'll need to do the API call now. All right. And so we probably want to grab uh, are we trying to get an image that has a tag or what do you have in mind? I will just do a query. Um, okay. so um, yeah. Like search it's, photos or I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's search photos and then I think it has a client ID parameter and um, yeah. Okay, so there's there's our basic setup. So we'll get a response and that's gonna be a wait fetch and we want it was row dot noun. No, yeah. And then we'll need to pass in a client ID, I think. Or is that yeah. I don't know. Is that okay. not required? Let's check. There's probably a, an auth thing up here. Authorization. Yeah. Got to so send an authorization like, header. So you can do, yeah, you can put, pass it in um, like that. So we'll just pass it in like. OK. Um, so we'll take this perfect. over to here. And we've already got a query going, so we'll do an and. Client ID, and then we're going to pass in unsplash secret. Yep. Okay. And then uh -huh. down here, um, get son, and that's going to be await res json. And we can, or no, we're not going to return that. No, we're going to go straight to the photo this time. So we're going to, yeah, so we're going to go straight to the photo. Um, we'll get the, we'll get the URL, um, for the first image. So it should be json. Um, and the first item in the array, and then it should be URLs. And then it's, um, we can use like, I think it has a small, um, and then so that's the, that's the URL. Um, and if we go back to look at the photos, we can see We get results. Oh, wait, I'm going to get a, I need to get a results object back first. So okay, yeah. Yeah. we'll have to go into results zero and then URLs and then there's a small. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. go. Regular or small, yeah, that's fine. 
And based on that results zero URL yep. small. Okay. Yeah, and then then let's do a, like that's up. We need to um, upload that file to storage. So we could okay. use the URL directly, but we want to upload it to storage. So make sure like our data stays consistent and we're not doing too many calls. Um, so we're not, we want to use the storage API. We have a Rowy utility for it. Oh, um, nice. So we'll just do, yeah. Um, so Rowy dot storage and then upload. And then we have, no, so we have a, you have a data option and a URL option. So this one, it's, it's a lot easier than using the storage directly. So you have like access to storage and you can do a lot more, but it's, like these things are very common and we just want to be like not having to repeat ourselves all the time. So this will sure. return a, um, so we want to like, let's just um, declare it um, so that we can see what it's returning. Okay. Um, just call it image. Um, and then if we hover over it, it's that returning a, should return a, um, so that's a row file. And then we can just return, so the image column expects an array of images. So we'll just pass it in an array. Um, yeah, and that's it. Okay. So now we have, yes, yeah, now we can see that it's going to work. And then we can update, and then we'll do later, don't need to deploy. And then we can right click and evaluate. Um, oops. I think I broke it. Okay, um, so we can um, console log the the URL. See if oh, actually I oh, no, I know what's wrong. Uh, we need to put a file name. Um, let's go to the settings. Um, settings. So the, here? the sorry, the, no, sorry. Let's go back to the column settings. Um, column settings. Yep. Yeah, so I scroll down. Second last one. Column settings. And then um, the issue is that it's if you don't pass in in the there's like option parameters in the URL. So after URL, um, we pass in a option and then we'll call a um, file name so it will give you the different options that you have and then we'll do just the noun uh, row dot noun and then plus um, it's it's usually a jpeg so we'll do a jpeg and then .jpeg. yeah yeah okay that should work and then if we save that um, update and then and then we can right click Hopefully that, yes. Hey, there it is. Um, and then you can now like, you, you can, here. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to open it. So there's a, so if you go to, if you minimize that, and then we have like on top of, on top of that, there's like the table icon. Um, if you go up a little bit and um, there's like, so you can manage the row height. And um, so it's like based on your table. So you can oh, see like, nice. Um, and then we have like other things like exporting and importing here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are all so that you can, depending on yeah. your like data needs, you can just set it up like that. And and for what we're doing here, this is pretty handy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So now we we'll get to we we'll get to the fun part. Um, well, and and I mean, yeah. like, let's also just take a second to call out that the only data I have entered here is corgi everything else is derived based on that so we we put one piece of data into this database and everything else auto populates based on what we put in here so if i'm understanding correctly i can come back in here and i can say uh let's get a burger right and then i can evaluate uh, yeah evaluate evaluate yeah and then basically this yeah um, this is like, you, you, it will be automatic once we build the function. So uh -huh. will, once you put in, um, let's do one thing, actually, I noticed we have to, we want to make the, the noun column required. So it doesn't create a, um, a row without it. So we'll go to column settings. 
uh, and we'll make this column required. And that's it. Um, so you have like other things here, but we just want to make it required so you don't add empty rows to your database. Got it. Uh, yeah. And we just update. Um, and now, like, if you want to try to add a new column, it won't um, add it until you have something typed in. Um, and then if you, like, refresh that page, it will not store it, I think. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah, so it, it will kind of force so me to create some yeah. content in here. So um, because you're dealing with, like, production data and you don't want empty things, and then... Um, So good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So now we want to get to the, basically these are all happening. Eventually we'll have them happening um, like based on the noun event once we build the final function. But for now, mm -hmm. let's add the, let's add the, um, the, the, card, the right? next function, the, the card generator. So we'll do another derivative here. And we'll call the like the card or um, yeah, and then we'll do another derivative field. And so the way this is gonna work is it uses Puppeteer um, inside okay. this function. So um, we'll do yeah. So we'll use um, the noun. We need the noun, and we need the definition, and then we need the unspecified URL, right? Uh -huh. Okay, and what's really cool about this is so the way that this is defined is if I if any of these fields doesn't exist, it's not going to try to run this, right? Um, yeah, it will actually. We we will. I was I was. I'm gonna add that soon. Um, but it it will the way this works now. It will evaluate whenever one of these changes. Um, I I will, I do want to add that option to make listener fields required. Gotcha. Um, but for now, we could, um, it will evaluate every time there's a thing. So we'll do it. I'll put in, output type is image. Um, gotcha. Output type is image. Yes, yeah, so that's a file. And then um, what are we going to do now? Um, let's have a look at the, no, before we go there. Um, okay. Let's have a look at the cloud function, um, the, the cloud company, uh, yeah, that cloud button. Um, okay. And so basically, I just want to show here is that we have the, so we have this, um, your, the posts, and then this is the, all your cloud functions that are, that are on, on your project, and all the rowy ones are going to be with name starts with R. So if we click on them, uh, if you can click on that one, so that's the one rowy generated for you. And then you have all this, like those powerful features of Google Cloud without having to deal with them yourself. And then you can look at the source code and all of that here. Um, so that like we like if you scroll down, so this if you scroll down a little bit, there should be a um, where is that? It's in source. There should be a yeah. So the function config ts so this is the your code so we compile that into here and then if you scroll down so you see all these the different uh, things okay you, yeah um so this is the latest build we haven't added so after this we'll see we'll see all the codes as well here so it just all of what like i just want like all row it does is it compiles that for you into one cloud function for that um event so like for that like table um and that way we, you don't have to try to do like all the checking of the different listener fields and all those things like yeah like making make making sure that only evaluate if this is required and all that mm -hmm. um, we, we want to manage that for you and you just do your api fetching and worry about the rest uh, that's it, it, this is this is great and and what i you know i also like that what's output is not necessarily like this is human readable you know we can use yeah. this code if if we were to yeah. for whatever reason want to stop using roe it doesn't mean that we can't 
continue to function on this this Firebase instance. Yeah. Um, so you're adding a really nice abstraction and not like a, a, a forever commitment to you must use Rowy forever and ever. Exactly. Um, exactly. Which is, so that's, that's nice. Yeah, so we want to do that, make sure that people feel comfortable into getting it. It's just, it is on your own GCP. You're not like putting on like some startups cloud and then if they if they have to sunset because they haven't figured out what they need to do, then you're like, what am I going to do? I need to now migrate. So you don't have to migrate mm -hmm. or anything. It's all open source. So if you need any of this, it's like if we don't have um, the Roy app, it's on GitHub, so you can host your own. Um, so if you go to GitHub, yeah, so you can host it yourself. Oh, this is the whole um, thing. That's also yeah. very cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So now um, we've so got. Now, um, yeah. <clears throat> so we've got our noun that we entered. We've got our definition that was derived using the dictionary API, and we've yeah. got the uh, the image that was derived using the the noun and the unsplash API, which yeah. we can now access. If I pop this open, uh, we'll yeah. be able to go to, like. Noun is going to be row dot noun. Uh, the definition will be row dot definition, and then the image is going to be a little bit different because that sounded like it was a rowy file. So if I get my image, yeah. it's going to be row yeah, dot uh, so unsplash. The unsplash, and then the first one. So this is an array. Um, so it's an array. Um, so you do okay. the first. Um, this is not. Oh, the, just... the, sorry, the first item. Got it. Yeah, and then down the down the jar. So, got it. so you, yeah, um, and then now we want to get the SVG template. So we we'll just um, we can declare a template, and then put we want to put the SVG string. And we want to copy. Okay, so that. let's go back to our code pen, and we're gonna get this value here, and it's in. I want to go one more here. No, I don't. I want to go. You can right click. Here. And, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine. Oh, wait, will it format? Oh, it'll format for me. Beauty. Yeah, I think I think this. I think because the string it won't format. Yeah, it won't format. Yeah. The SVG. yeah. Um, that's okay because this is close enough. Here we go. Um, so we've got we've got this here, and so yeah. now that I've got my noun, my definition, and my image, yeah. so I can just wanna, drop these yeah, in, that, right? Um. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna go in here. I've got my noun. So noun. Over here, I've got my definition. So yep. definition. And then here I've got my my yeah. download image. I'm gonna set my yep. image. And now then, this should be a fully generated image and we just have to put it somewhere, right? So this is a, a an SVG, um, right? right? And what we want to do is we want to convert it to a PNG. Um, Got it. And, okay. and because it's using a foreign object, um, we need to use Puppeteer um, because it will, I think it's like um, one of the few options that can handle, because you need to open the SVG in a browser to to support foreign objects. Um, okay. So we'll, let's, we need to use a, like a, there's a, there's an NPM package that converts um, to convert to SVG to PNG that uses Puppeteer. So I think if you search for it, um, it's called convert SVG to PNG. Um, yeah, the first one. This one? Yeah. I think okay. that one, yeah. So that one, um, we'll look at how they use it. Um, do they have a? Do they have the the API example? Um, that's a yeah. That's that's the one. Um, we'll just copy that one. Okay. So we'll we'll start with our. Yeah. Oh no! no um, put it inside the function. Um, inside that way we've done. That way, it's uh, it's more optimal. Um, gotcha. So that you only load it when you need it. Um, 
and then okay. we just need to image. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Um, All right, so I'm gonna image. I'm gonna get my image. And we're going to put in the SVG template. Yep. Is that and then, it? Yeah, that's it. That should be it. That should be it. And then, and then, and then after Dang. that, we want to upload. Now, now we want to. So now that's a like that's a buffer. So we will do Rolly um, storage and then upload. And then it's a data, so it's not um, none. So that's a because that's not a URL. So the so you have to. Oh right, I'm I'm doing yep. the thing. Okay. Yeah. And then is it the same thing where I have to give it a file name? Um, yeah, you can yeah, you can give it a file name. Same thing. Okay. Um, so let's, let's go, go with noncard.png. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think and then we'll yeah, we'll return that as a file and then we'll upload that. Yeah. And that's an array as well. And that's we're good? Yep. All right. Um, and then, yeah, we can update that. And then we'll need to build this time because, yeah, so we'll need to deploy okay. um, because this uses like the NPM package. So we can't just, the, the like. And it's smart enough to just pull that it. NPM package for us. Exactly. So you don't have to oh, um, worry about nice. that. Oh, no. What's wrong? Hey, bro. That's slick. Okay, but it doesn't look uh, like something that I've done, which yeah, is what? Um, if we scroll, um, can we expand that panel? We can expand the panel. Um, Let's there's see. something wrong. Um, um, I think there, there might be um, Invalid compiled function. Yeah, there might be an issue. Um, yes. Is it going to highlight can, or anything? Um, you can copy it into VS Code, and then we can see what's wrong. Um, okay. Not all of it, actually. If you scroll Start down. here, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's all. Um, yeah, up to there. Command failed. Okay, so let's go into this code. Create a new thing. Uh, we'll call this TypeScript. Drop this in here, and then let's make it bigger. Hopefully, that can help. Look us. for the error. So did we um, did we declare it? Okay, can oh maybe there's a okay that shouldn't be there. Um, that like line twenty nine. Um, so we have a look. SVG to PNG. Okay, did I do? Let's see. Maybe I screwed something up. Let's close get, this yeah. up. Let's um, go back which, here. Which one was the error? Is that the error one? Um, did, is it that was in here. Line? Is it because of the first line? Const no, async. Is it like you're starting on um, line two rather than line one? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Um, Try. If that was yeah. If that was where the. Yeah. Um. If that generates successfully, then yeah, if you scroll down Not now. yelling this time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, so now it's going to deploy the cloud function, and then it should be good. Um, do we have more time? How are we doing on time? We have about 15 minutes left. OK. Um, I have a suggestion. Do we want okay. to make it so that the chat can enter words in, and then we'll generate um, chat? Do we want to do that? Can you be trusted? Are you going to behave if we let you put in plain text? That feels like we might have regrets, but we can try. 
We can do it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show like other features that we have on Roy. Um, so we can close that, or let it build in the background. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, there's the there's like the webhooks icon. So let's just go through. Um, so you see here we have like the the webhooks, which is like it receives other services webhooks. So it's um, if we add a new webhook, um, okay. and then we'll just do basic. Okay. And then here we have like the endpoint that we will be calling, and then we can we can go skip the we can skip the verification step, um, and then we have the condition. If we want to like, there's a request coming in. We can condition. We can skip that. Like sometimes we want to parse, and sometimes we don't. Like we can add like additional validation. And all this does is it takes in a request, um, and then it will add it to your data and um, to your database. So from, from any, like it provides an API for you to put data in. So it could be coming from um, any third party webhook. Okay. Um, but for now we want to do, I just want to build like a, like a web form that you can put in uh, a word in and then we can do an API um, so however you want to, uh, yeah. if you want to put that in locally or if you want to do a code sandbox, I don't know if you can do it on CodePen and share that. Uh, yeah, then. let's do it on CodePen because I don't think I've got yeah. quite enough time to to really like configure yeah, exactly. something. So let's yeah, exactly. let's see. This is the I'll deal just, with that later. Does, let's does get Code a new Pen, code. Does CodePen have React? Um, I don't know how to. It it can have React, but we shouldn't we shouldn't really need it um, in this okay. particular case. Yeah. We should be able to just do a form. Yeah. The action is going to be our webhook. Is that right? Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got a, a webhook, and then the method is going to be post, and then that is going to have a label, and the label is going to have a name. No. Label is going to have a four of uh, noun. And we'll drop this in. And then we're going to have an input with an ID of noun and a name of noun, type of text. Okay. And then we're going to put a button, type submit. And we'll say, Add noun. Will make me regret this chat. Uh, okay, so then that gives us the ability to add a noun. And what yeah. should happen is if we put um, in. I think we need to, to we need to save that configuration. Um, oh, I need to save it so, before. Yeah. Got so it. is that is that going to go into the body? And um, the noun is going to be in the body. Right. So this is going to uh, this is going to so put gonna... in. So, so we'll spread the body into into the into a document. So this will create a new document. Mm -hmm. um, and then so, can you is that... do it as body post data, which means that what what will happen is it's going to post as like noun equals thing, which means I need uh, parse. We don't oh, no. Um, yeah, um, this, um, this part here can't, we don't have the, because this is, it's not a build function, we don't have, um, independent, independent, external dependencies yet. Um, okay. So, uh, then yeah. let's see. Do you know how to, I mean, we can just, we can just break it up, right? Like we, we can do a uh, noun, we'll do a uh, noun equals body split on equals and that's going to be a very very poorly handled uh validation for this form but that's okay because we're we're going uh, we to speed. enable it um can we enable it um yeah so that one you can so once the chat is being naughty we can disable it <laughs> yes which i suspect will be immediately uh <laughs> <laughs> but so that's that's now added and yeah. is it webhook successfully published? 
Okay, so let's give it a test. We're going to try uh, mouse. And what happens in the console? I'm not sure. Let's go look back here. Um, do we have the Do we have the logs? Um, so you have. Can you look at the like the row logs? Um, so if you go there, and then you have webhooks. So this is the build logs. Um, mm. And then this should be, oh, if you select, yeah, so. Audi.split is not a function or its return value is not. Oh, it did submit as JSON. Oh, okay. you mu maybe you must be parsing it for me then. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes my life easier. Let's go back into the webhooks and fix this. And down here. Okay. Then I just need to get noun. Out of body. Yeah. Then, so yeah. So the default it defaults to JSON. Um, got it. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then now you can try again. Try again. Add. Okay. That's it's good. okay. And okay. Um, there it is. Picture yeah. of a mouse. All right. Um, okay, chat. I am going to give you access to this and i swear to god don't make me regret let's see, it see um wait let's see if the this did the image generate the it did person? yeah it was just a. it's like a dark um, is this no that's the oh the um, card didn't generate the card didn't generate yeah um it's like none of them did um if you try to no so they they won't do it it will only happen whenever like the any of those are changed um, okay. If we build, um, yeah. Let's see. Can we try again? Um, if you change the mouse word to something else. Uh, let's. There's our chair, but it doesn't like this. Can Can we have a look at the code again? Did we forget to await something? Let's see, we await, await. Is uh, if I go oh, look at these. So okay, so it's um, there's um, so it has to be from buffer. Um, so the SVG, the convert. Um, convert needs to be um, inside a buffer dot from. So, so inside the convert, so it doesn't take a string; it takes a buffer. Um, oh, the I convert gotcha. takes a buffer, and then it'll do from, and then, yeah. I have to pass the encoding or anything. Yeah. Um. No, that's it. Okay. That's, yeah. That's. All and right. So update. let's update that. Get it yeah. deployed. Yeah, um, and and then yeah, so we can we can make that live afterwards. Um, we can yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is here. I'm gonna send this to the chat. I, I see. It. Let's see how long it is before I have to <laughs> turn the whole chat yeah. off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this will, okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So we just got to okay. wait for, yeah. good. So you have a little. I'm like poised over the closed tab for when somebody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like Sweden is a proper noun, so we don't get a definition for that. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, pal. Yeah. <laughs> So that's there, yeah. Yeah, so we can like handle it uh, later and stuff. Um, so is that is that built yet? Um, so we can have a look at the logs. So there's the logs. Uh, uh, here's my logs. Here's the build. Yeah, so that's still, still building. building. It so, is. So it's deploying. Um, yeah, that should be, that should take like another minute. Um, yeah. Do we have more time to do more things or? 
Mm. I think this might be the the last thing that yeah. we can do while we're waiting for okay. this to deploy. Um, yeah. Do you want to, for folks who want to go and learn more, are there resources that they should be looking for? Yeah, so we have, um, so we're, we have the docs, um, we have the GitHub. So if you want to, I saw that you did um, a show on uh, contributing to open source. So we have a few, good few first issues that you can look at if you want to contribute. Um, you can join the Discord if you want to try out Rowe and need any help. I'm, I'm on the Discord. Um, yeah. This episode here, if you want to learn how to do open source, there's B. Dougie on the show. Uh, yeah. You said a Discord. It looks like. So the Discord is. Um, here? Is Discord? Yes, yeah. yeah. So if you all want to jump in here, get into the Discord. Um, I'll go back and look almost. Uh, are there any. Oh, here yeah, we go. We're, We're done. done. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's try this again. Yeah. So uh, try I'm going to yeah. save. <laughs> Regret. <laughs> 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 Correct. That is what yeah. I'm feeling right now. All right, let's uh, let's change this, and does the thing. What about this one? Do I get it? Do we get it? Hopefully. Did that do anything? Um, where is it? Looks like it's not firing. Is there uh, is there a log I can see in here somewhere that would show? Mm. Yes, there is. Um, oh, yeah, there. So here, so you have the errors. Can I, can I find it? So it didn't install it for some reason. Um, can I see how you did that? Yeah. Let's go back over to uh, this one, column settings. And I did a require. Should yeah. it be an import? No, no, no. Require should be um, the one. Um, can we just uh, double quotes? I don't know. Um, instead of the single one? That shouldn't be the case, but it looks like. Um, yeah, so okay. we have to deploy again. Yeah. This this might um, be our last try. If this one doesn't work, we'll uh, we'll yeah. tweet about it once we yeah. get it running. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, that should be it. So it's um yeah. So like, um, we have the the logs there for you. So if there's any issues, it's it's a, it's a lot easier to um, figure out what the problem is. So if you like look at the logs again, we can um, um you can see like all the different errors. So you don't have to dig around and see like all. Oh, um, mm -hmm. What's the problem? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is like, and this is also, it's just great to see this happen because what we're, what we're getting here is, you know, everybody's just submitting this one word and we're getting like, okay, a beach and we get a definition and we get this thing. And so the, yeah. you can see how quickly like chat, I hope your, your gears are turning here on ways that you can automate things. Um, actually, you know what we should look at while you're doing this? Don't you have a, a live demo of, oh, yeah, um, yeah, okay. is it the video enrichment? Let me let me go um, grab this while we're waiting for yeah. it to deploy. We have, um, so we'll create a demo account for you. So we have like translations is a cool demo. Um, so if you open translations, um, yeah. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen this in a while. Um, but basically if you type in a word, um, it will, it will translate it for you into French, and then it should generate the audio as well. Oh, nice. Let's do uh, um, friends. OK. And OK. Nice. And I don't think I'm. Let me, let me pipe that. my sound through. Where did my sound so that, go? Yeah. I, I don't have sound pipe, pipe out right, yeah. right now. Let's here we yeah. go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so basically, um, so basically, oh, that just went horribly yeah. wrong, didn't it? When I routed it through. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It works. All right. Sorry, friends. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's that's really cool. And then back here uh, yeah. is is so this like, the uh, one that'll? So this fetches um, like IMD data as well. So this um, one is like, you freaking just put in, cool. Yeah, you can put it. So let's put in um, Forrest Gump, right? Yeah. And then it's going to automatically populate. There's the, so the IMDb the first thing, ID. Yeah. yeah, and then from that, it goes in and scrapes IMDb um, web page, and we can look at the like the function for it as well. Um, so you have like the metadata. Yeah, so there it is. Um, nice. So that, and so while that's while that's going, I'm gonna let's hope try that this. works. Make a capital. I think the capital quality looks nice. Here. Hopefully. Capital Corgi, new Corgi, do the thing. Um, yeah, let's look at the logs. Um, so the first, the uh, it grips them by section. So the the thing on top is always the latest. Um, oh, gotcha. So that's the one. Yeah, um, and then you can just you can change the the day, the 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 time duration. So in the top um, right corner. Um, you can just change it to like minutes and that should fetch. Um, did that finish successfully? It's still getting a module not found it's on it, it looks like. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, up, I'll have a look at that and then we can update it and then we can share it after the, the, the cool. show. I'm not sure. Yeah. But then but yeah, looking so back the, here, you know, we gave it a second and now we've got the, the movie is populated, the description of it. We've got some different metadata, a link. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, a rating, which is pretty cool, which this looks can, like something yeah, that do, I yeah. can save my own, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is just interactive field. So, um, yeah. And then you have like, like to go read reviews. Sub collection, um, so sub sub tables. So where you have like nested data, like reviews, um, this goes into like, you can add, um, reviews in here. And then I think it. this one has sentiment analysis as well. So if you add a row. Um, oh, oh, it, it, sentiment and out? That's amazing. Okay. Uh, so if you Give write a comment. Yeah. Um, and then if you look okay. at the code for it, um, yes, yeah, so you have a 90% sentiment. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, if you look at the code for it, it's very simple. Um, if you go to the settings and then the column settings, and then it's basically just using the the Google Cloud language AP, like uh, NPM mm -hmm. package, and that's all you need to do to get like the the score um, of that. Yeah. Like, so you don't have to like do any machine learning or anything. And because like we're already on GCP here, um, mm -hmm. we don't need to like authenticate or initialize like client side because it's all on your cloud. Gotcha. Um, it already knows like, okay, so this is being called on this project and then I'm gonna build like, this is like, a, there's a free tier on this one, but once you like exceed it, then you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, who's gonna pivot? It's like already, you don't have to like manage secrets and everything because it's, it's all That's the same project. Very cool. So uh, chat, I hope your, your gears are turning. I hope you're thinking of some cool things you can build here. I know that I've got a handful of ideas. Um, that is all the time we have today. So let's do another shout out to, uh, to Jordan from White Coat Captioning, who's been here doing the live captioning all day. That's made possible from our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all of whom are kicking in to make the show more accessible and uh, just giving me more, more gas to play with, right? So uh, make sure you go check out the schedule while you're looking at things on the site. You can head over to here. We've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. On Thursday, Cassie Evans is going to come teach us how to make interactive animations. Uh, we're going to get into some green sock stuff. GSAP, if you've ever heard of it, it's super fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you go mark the schedule. You can add on Google Calendar. Uh, make sure while you are looking for things to do, you go and get into uh, Rowie here. And I don't know why that's showing. Great. Um, 
and uh, make sure you you go and and follow them. Uh, and I think that is all we've got time for today. So we're going to go find somebody to raid. Uh, Shams, any, any special words before we wrap this thing up? Um, no, just, uh, yeah, going to make that 400 full account for a way. Uh, <laughs> but no, thank you. Thank you so much for having, a, having me on. Um, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, yeah. It was a blast. Um, Thanks y'all for hanging yeah. out. Thanks, Shams, for spending some time with us. We will see you all next time. Thank you.